Hey everybody, this is Larry with Leading Edge Industrial, and today we're going to go over creating fully defined sketches and the reason for them. Uh, first off, what we want to do is we're going to start off with uh, creating geometry. I like to use shortcuts here, so what I'll do is I'll call out the shortcut uh, letter and then explain to you what I'm doing. So let's before we get into the fully defined sketches, let's go ahead and sketch it out because it makes more sense after I get it sketched out. Then we'll talk about creating fully defined and go about solving that. So the very first thing we're going to do is going to hit R for rectangle and select the top plane. I like to do the top plane because then the uh, Z axis is pointing at me. Now uh, select the uh, origin point and uh, sketch that out or draw that out. Now let's go ahead and do a, a line do L for line, and we're going to sketch two midpoint relations here. Once those are done, hit escape, select both of those lines that we just created, and hit X to turn them into construction geometry. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit S for the toolbox, the sketch toolbox. And uh, what I've done is gone and created some of the tools that I like to use um, a lot and thrown them in here. And I want to grab the center rectangle and we're going to drag that out. Next thing we're going to do is hit escape and we're going to select these four solid lines and turn them into uh, construction lines by hitting X. Okay, so the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit um, C for circle and we're going to create a circle in the middle and then one on each of these corners here. And this is going to be a very simple drawing. We're just doing a square gasket, what I call a gasket. This will be a part that we'll see several times over some of our future lessons here because they're easy to create but easy to explain concepts. So now, right now what we have is we have an undefined sketch. And by undefined that means I can grab just about any part of this geometry and I can move it around and change its sizes whether it's that circle or this corner here. Now the problem with that is if I have an undefined sketch and things aren't locked down then anybody who comes in here to create to make changes to this part can now, you know, maybe they just wanted to change the outside uh, dimensions. Well, now not only have I changed the outside dimensions, but now my circles, my uh, corner circles here, are all off where they used to be. So now the entire drawing changes. Well, we don't like we don't want that if we want to do uh, we want to make parts that we're going to manufacture. So the first thing that we're going to do is a lot of this stuff here we already have symmetric constraints and I'll explain symmetric constraints in the next video. This is part one of a three-part series where we're going to go over just doing a simple uh, gasket style um, design which is you know a couple squares and circles. Then we're going to go over a revolve design and then for a third video then we're going to take a part that was designed by one of our engineers here at the shop and we're going to walk through taking that and locking down the design. So this is a philosophy that we do at our shop um, that we're implementing at our shop and all of our new engineers will follow. Uh, their rules, they're not hard and solid rules. You don't have to follow my rules. If, you, if you've got a better way by all means go about doing it. But this is stuff that I've learned over 20 years that um, gives me uh, good solid parts and they're easy to change. So the first thing we're going to do now is let's go ahead and start locking down some of these dimensions and we'll start with the outside. Uh, we'll hit D for dimension and let's take the top line and every once in a while it does that. D for dimension, take the top line and we're going to make that three inches. Then we're going to take the side, the left line, and we're going to make that two inches. And now hit, double click your middle mouse button and it'll zoom out. And we want to make this center line, or this top line here, 2.5 inches. And this one here, 1.5 inches. So now you see as we're, divide, as we're adding dimensions here, we're actually locking down our design. And uh, by locking them down, you can see those lines turn from blue to black. That means that they're fully defined. That means I can't come over here and grab a corner and move that around. I can still grab anything that's in blue and move it around, but I can't grab the corners that are already locked down. So let's go back to our dimension, hit D. We're going to do a center circle of, let's just make that like 1.25 inches. Now, um, let's do uh, the circle. Let's grab the lower right circle, add our dimension to that, and let's make that th uh, maybe 3 eighths of an inch. Now, I want all four of those circles to be the same size. There's two ways that you can go about doing that. The first one is you can click equal and then go back and click 
one at a time and refer them back to the original um, dimensioned part. Or you can select all your circles at first and then hit the equal tab or the equal constraint in order to make all of those equal. Well, why didn't it do that? I must not. Have, I must have select the points then. Let's let's undo that and I'll show you how to do that better. So if I come in here and I select all my circles, make sure they're all in blue, and then hit equal. Now they're all equal. Okay, so now I've got a fully defined sketch, which means now if I want to come in here and I want to change this to be, you know, 3.125, I can do that and everything scales around with that center point. Um, so let's go ahead and let's double click again, bring it into the center of our view of our screen and maybe give it a isometric view and we're going to hit E for extrude and we're just going to make it minus 0.125 so then that way the top plane always stays at the at my X and Y plane hit enter and I like the way that that's going but I'm going to add a couple fillets in here just to top off the design so we'll go hit F for fillet select each one of the corners sometimes that one's a bugger to hit so we'll just spin it around that and then let's make that point uh, maybe 0 0.25 it's kind of nominal right here this isn't really a part that you know we're, we're creating but just to kind of understand the concepts the reason why I didn't add the fillets while we were sketching is every once in a while that will cause issues with some of your midpoint constraints so I always find it easier to create the fillet after you create the part or the extrusion so for now we're gonna go ahead and call this part fully defined and we're gonna move on to the second part if you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment section below. Click like, please click like and subscribe for our videos so you can get updates on our uh, future videos that we've got coming on. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.